YouTube channel um, and people will be coming in as we go. Um, uh, I am the pro, uh, director of the School Mental Health Advanced Practice Program, which is a, a really cool program that you're about to meet some wonderful students from. Um, and we're gonna talk about kind of what they've learned uh, as they build school social work for high school students during this pandemic. Uh, I work at Loyola. Here's my sweatshirt uh, that I always want to wear every time I get together on this webinar. Um, this is the second of five webinars we're doing uh, around this topic, um, all of them targeted at specific grade levels. Um, so people are uh, already familiar if you've been to our YouTube channel of the elementary school practice one. We have three more after today. Uh, all led by practitioners just like you and school mental health advanced practice uh, students uh, here at Loyola. Um, and so today's high school and uh, you're in the right place if you're looking for high school uh, content. We will have in the following few days on Wednesday, we're gonna do an alternative education um, uh, program where people talking about being in alternative ed settings, special ed settings, things like that, um, how they're doing uh, remote uh, uh, school social work practice and supporting families. We're going to then uh, wind up with a twofer on the Thursday, which is in the morning, early childhood, pre-K, school social work, and then the afternoon, middle school. Um, all of these will be free. All of these will be up on our YouTube channel if you can't make it. And certainly you can send uh, any colleagues that aren't part of the network to that as well. Um, before I introduce uh, our, our uh, panelist moderator, uh, uh, Lisa Johnson here. I just want to make a few other housekeeping notes. Um, we are going to uh, definitely go through uh, all of our presentations and questions and answers and end at five o'clock uh, central time. Um, certainly, um, we are going to invite any and all questions and comments in the chat. Um, as Lisa had said, we're not going to be able to have everybody on camera and everybody voice to voice with our presenters given the size of the room. Um, nice problem to have, but it also means we're not going to be able to see you all that way. Um, so please take yourself off video and mute yourself. Make sure you do that just so we have minimized background noise and, and other things. Um, secondly, we are very interested uh, in addition to getting to a Q&A point. Um, we are very interested in having a, a part two out of this. Um, we have invited all the presenters to, um, to present what they're doing and how, how it's looking for them where they are. Um, but one of the things we're um, also going to explore is if people are interested in getting together again, using Zoom, using our network um, to have a professional learning community for maybe now through the end of the school year and maybe into the summer if people really want to meet. Um, it's volunteer. It's certainly up to this group to decide if they want to do that. But I want you to know if you're interested in that, um, I will, I'm going to do a quick screen share of my own. So I'm just going to do that real quickly, Lisa, and I'll be back to yours. Um, all of you have, uh, it, it will have in a minute when I put the link to you, the ability to go to this, um, this Google Drive folder. Uh, it says school social work in a pandemic. Uh, there will be all these materials in the high school one, then you'll be able to see those. And then here is a Google sheet where we are asking anybody who's interested to sign up for one of the PLCs you might want to be part of. So in this case, you're looking right now at the elementary one and we have some real interest there. Uh, this is the high school one and we have a few people have already signed up there. Um, so you're gonna be invited to that and, and certainly think about that if that's something you'd like to do or invite other colleagues to, all right? Um, and I will put again, all the slides, all the presentation materials that these guys are about to share in that same space, you can go get them, all right? Okay. So why uh, one last last thing and then I want to tell you a little bit about Lisa and the SMAP program. So it is uh, such an honor and a privilege to be here tonight today with these uh, these fine school social workers and to be here with all of you. Um, this has been a uh, uh, a unprecedented time in our lifetime. Um, you know, I've been because I'm a history person as well as a school social worker and a school mental health researcher. I've been reading reading about previous plague era experiences, the Spanish flu and some of the other plagues in his history. Um, but no one no one alive today that has um, been around knows anything about what this looks like at this scale. I mean, this is this is all new for all of us. And um, that's even more clear when we go into talking about adolescents and we talk about our schools and our fellow colleagues and staff. Um, so rather than, um, I obviously, you know a little bit about our network and our site, we've been putting up lots of references and resources and things like that, and we'll keep doing that. Um, there certainly are ever-changing things happening at the federal level and the state level. 
Um, many of us are in states like ours in Illinois that have said school is out for the rest of the year in terms of in-person time. Um, but that's, that's gonna be very um, interesting to see because as we know, we're beginning to see coming from um, conservative Republicans and the president, um, some push to basically reopen the country in ways that may or may not be very uh, indicated by public health and maybe more indicated by other things, but we could easily have in the next couple months, a real crazy quilt of some states are open, some aren't, some places are having really high upticks in people getting infected again, some aren't. Um, so all of that is to say, we're in this very kind of fluid time um, we're hopefully uh, talking to all of you and you and yours are safe and are, are healthy, but we know that that's another piece of this is that people are beginning to have um, many people they know that they care about are experiencing this directly. Uh, and I've shared before, this is not a secret, but my wife is a family practice doc. She is right now at the hospital in our town. She is part of the healthcare kind of force that um, is trying to keep people healthy and safe. And she's doing all the right things to take care of herself. Um, so I'm, I, that's my own connection to this and she's healthy. Um, but most of us are about to be touched by this in new, new ways as well as this, as this virus spreads. Um, and then there's the very real issue about what's happening right now with high schools, which is what it today is, which is how do we put together a way to engage adolescents and the school communities that we're part of at a time where adolescents uh, may or may not be very engaged or may uh, be, um, less responsive maybe than some of the younger kids are for a variety of reasons. Um, there is also already in the chat a question about graduation. Um, that's certainly a very live one. How do you deal with graduation, seniors going to college, going to work, whatever they're gonna do. Um, so I, I can't think of a better group of people to help me think about those things with you than who you're about to meet. So um, this group comes from the School Mental Health Advanced Practice Program. It is a 15 credit, 99% online, two year deal we do here at Loyola. It is designed to help you be a school leader, be a social emotional leader, be somebody who can step into crises like this, situations like this and say, here's what the best evidence says we can do. Here's what I know how to do. Here's what the school needs. So I'm gonna uh, give it over now to Lisa Johnson Hare. She is a school social worker in a, a community outside of St. Louis. Uh, and she has been, uh, for the last two years part of the program. She's set to graduate in, uh, in the summer along with a couple other panelists that you'll, she'll introduce you to later. Um, and like I said, we'll be back as a group in about 40, 45 minutes with, for, for questions. So Lisa, take it away. Good afternoon or early evening, everybody. I'm Lisa Johnson Harris, Dr. Kelly said. Um, I've got a PowerPoint I'll share um, with you that we are, have done as a group. So let me put this on share. Um, <clears throat> so as he said already, we're working um, today as high school social workers. Um, we're having a panel to talk about our response to school closures and what we're doing in relation to the COVID-19 uh, coronavirus pandemic. Well, hold on. Um, so our panelists today, and I'll introduce them and let them introduce themselves a little further, is are going to be Nadia Gomez Moran. She is from the um, Western Chicago suburbs, and she's been in high school practicing for seven years. We have Angie Halstead. She's in Nebraska practicing rural social work, and she's been practicing for 26 years. Pat Wolf, um, he is in the Chicagoland area in the suburbs also, and he has been practicing for 15 years. And then myself, and um, I'm in North St. Louis County, and I've been practicing for 16 years, nine of which were in the middle school. The last seven have been in high school. So as far as housekeeping, um, we're asking that you um, please mute yourself. Um, and I believe Dr. Kelly has automatically muted everyone, but in case you have unmuted yourself, if you will please mute yourself. And then we're asking everybody to stop the camera. So the panelists will be the primary people talking. So we'll leave them on camera. Um, and then all questions will be via chat as we're expecting to have a large turnout tonight. Um, I've told you about myself a little bit. I am currently in the school mental health advanced practice certificate at Loyola. This is my second year um, doing that. So I'm excited and um, I've learned so much and um, we'll have something later if you wanna get some additional information on how to um, 
project yourself as a school leader and um, looking at resources. There's a lot of things that I've learned from this program. So the first thing we wanted to do was take a pause and check in with everybody um, and look at um, how you're doing. Um, and not just how you're doing, everybody asks that question globally, but how are you really doing? Um, and are you participating in self-care? And um, what are you doing? We want you to be thinking about that. Um, and then what can you add to your personal overall wellness? What do you need that you're not doing? Do you need more sleep? Do you need to eat more nutritiously? Do you need to add a workout routine? What things are you doing to take care of yourself? Because eventually we will get to go back to our schools and I think our students are gonna need us even more than they have before. <clears throat> so my current focus in, um, in the building I serve is uh, connection, connection with students, connections with their families, connection with staff people, care and compassion. Those are the biggest things that we're focused on right now. Um, we need to make sure that um, that everybody feels connected, everybody feels supported, everybody feels cared for. And so that's what we're working on right now. This time is so unusual. Um, so we have to try to give people as much normalcy as possible and having somebody say that they care about you is one of those ways that we're executing that. Um, it's not as easy as it looks. Um, <clears throat> And I don't know if this overall difficulty scale, scale it might be a little flipped. Um, for me, it's, um, I like to think about where people are and how they're feeling. What does this look like for people? How are people responding? Um, how people normally respond in a crisis? I always like to think about in moments of crisis, people re return to what they know. And so I think with this, we multiply that times three. So everybody has multiple hats. We have our students. They're also sometimes employees, they're siblings. They might be parents, their parents are parents. Everybody's human. And we have to remember that all of these multiple roles that we play. And now um, we've removed some of um, people's safe places. And there are some place where you have a sole identity. At my job, I'm just a social worker. Um, but at home, I'm a social worker and a parent and a spouse and everything else. So there's a lot involved with those multi-tiers and having them all at once. And then also multiple losses. We have students um, not only losing people to, um, to the virus and, um, and people just in general with sickness and other health issues, but um, kids are losing fun stuff, prom, graduation, um, the connection and spending time with their friends. So we have to think about all of those things and how that looks too, um, just to kind of put you into the perspective for people. Um, <clears throat> so um, compassion, one of the things that we've been focusing on um, in our building for our trauma-informed care and trying to help people recognize where they are and, and recognize um, where students might be and where they might come from is um, looking at your own self-care and your own compassion. So you're wanting to, um, I always remind people, give people the compassion that you would give to others or you would have for others. So um, people are, are, are stressed out. I don't feel like I'm doing enough. I'm not working hard enough, especially um, social workers. We're used to doing, we're used to moving. Um, so considering that, but what would you say to somebody else? And then turn that inward. Um, separation from work and personal, those are gonna be very important in this time. Take time away, turn a phone off, um, set specific hours so that you know um, when you're on and when you're not on. Um, <clears throat> butterfly hug and ProQuil, I'm gonna stop share screen for a second and I've got a couple things. So butterfly hug, um, I'm also an EMDR trained therapist um, so one of the things um, EMDR talks a lot about bilateral stimulation and being in both sides of your brain. So a butterfly hug is a way you can hug yourself and give yourself um, bilateral stimulation. So when you're in the world of social distancing and you might not be able to hug, you can hug yourself. So, um, so you can tap your arms here. 
I like the collarbone up here. It's more sensitive area for people um, that if you don't want people to see you hugging yourself, you can tap your leg. So some people do that naturally anyway. You've got to have the left right rhythm. Um, and so I have a I have I've put in the zoom in our room. Um, it's, it's in the uh, this Google link folder. in our share folder. So this is um, talking about the butterfly hug and um, the method, what it's about, gives you more details. Um, you can also find several YouTube videos that talk about um, the butterfly hug and what it looks like. So you see somebody there giving the butterfly hug and what that looks like. Um, <clears throat> the other one is um, the ProQuo Professional Quality of Life. Um, we've been doing this for um, a little while. We got this from um, initially from Alive and Well STL. It's an organization here in St. Louis area um, that's working with us on our trauma-informed care in schools. <clears throat> so as part of um, our staff self-care, we're doing this professional quality of life. So it looks at your compassion satisfaction and your compassion fatigue. And, um, and so it gives you these questions. Um, so you answer the questions, um, am, I am happy, I'm preoccupied with more than one person. So it gives you all these 30 questions and then at the end you get to score yourself and then you get to look at your compassion satisfaction, your burnout and, um, and your secondary traumatic stress. And so it gives you the scoring guide at the bottom that tells you if you're low, moderate, high. So, um, so if you're really not sure where you are, um, that is a, a great tool that you can look at and maybe use for some of your colleagues. Um, we do it for all of our um, staff um, a couple of times a year to kind of see where people are. Um, let me see what else. Oh, also ProQuil has a full um, website, The Professional Quality of Life. Um, and they have this lovely little quick card. You can download it right here. Um, we're caring for yourself in, um, in the face of difficult work. And so it gives you things like eating more, sleeping more, um, doing some light exercise, doing something pleasurable, um, pray, meditate, relax, support a colleague, share private jokes. So it's got, um, fun, fun little things that you can do, um, looking at, at these things and, and, and I think a lot of people are gonna be here. So um, at some point during this, so, so thinking about that is gonna be important. And let me see, I don't know if there's anything else. I think that's everything I wanted to share. I also um, will share a link later. Um, <clears throat> Nadia found this on um, the mindfulness.org where they have Zoom exhaustion and six ways you can find balance and still stay connected. So um, that's a, a quick read that you can um, look at and, and think about everything um, and all of the meetings that you're in also uh, as far as connection, disconnection. All right, I'm gonna go back to our share, to our PowerPoint. So, <clears throat> Um, I also put the links in the PowerPoint. So if you want to go to the EMDR um, foundation, research foundation and look at the butterfly hug, look at ProQuo website or the downloads or the Zoom or the mindfulness.org um, article about Zoom exhaustion, it's all there for you. So next is Nadia Gomez Moran. Um, and she will tell you a little bit more about herself. Um, I like this picture of her here. So um, Nadia, um, let me know when you're ready for me to stop sharing so you can um, share your video. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. I think it, it's great that we started talking about self-care because I definitely think, um, you know, as we're moving into the last couple of weeks of school, especially for us here in Illinois, now that we know that schools are definitely out um, and we're doing remote learning for the remainder of the year. I think we're still sort of uh, trying to figure out and trying to trying to move forward. And it's definitely a stressful time for all of us, especially those of us that are, you know, working at home and have multiple things going on at home as well. 
Um, but again, thanks everybody for, for joining us. My name is Nadia Gomez Moran. I, again, I'm a high school social worker here in the Chicago Western suburbs. Um, I'm also in the second year of the School Mental Health Advan Advanced Practice Certificate student. Um, I've learned uh, so much from this program that I think I will carry on for all the years of my practice. And I love the, the opportunity to be able to connect with colleagues because I do feel like our profession might be very isolated in our school buildings. And this allows us to really connect with others and share ideas um, and just feel supported as well. Um, I added this picture of myself there, not so that you can get to see me more, but because this is one of the ways that we're doing outreach for our students. We're sending, you know, little messages here and there with um, with a thing. I don't know if you can see it. It's a little bright, but it says, hey, Blazers, which is our mascot. We will get through this together. Can you go? Yeah. I was trying to zoom in. It, uh, yeah, it's. I can read it, it's okay. We will get through this together, be safe, we miss you. Uh, and so this is one of the ways that we are trying to connect with our students by sending uh, via our Twitter or social media pages, just little messages for our students so that they know that we can, uh, we're still here for them. You know, school is not canceled, like a lot of the headlines said, you know, school is still in session. We're just trying to do this remotely. Okay, go to the next one. Um, and, and I saw this um, this picture a couple of weeks ago when schools were starting to, to go into e-learning e or remote learning, as we call it now. And I thought it was a great um, representation of what our students are going through. We, I've actually used this with some of my staff um, in, in terms of, you know, making sure that, you know, we're, we're really grilling on academics and, and attendance and our students checking in, but are we really focusing on a lot of the, the lack of normal routines and loss of structure that our students are facing? Um, a little bit of context, I, while I work with a lot of different populations in the school, our school building is about 2000 students, I predominantly work within tier three and um, a special education self-contained program and an alternative program for uh, general education students. And so I spend a lot of my time with students that you know, need structure, that need, need a lot of support, that we are their main support system throughout the day. And so I can only help and think about, we all, you know, all the things that our students are missing regarding, you know, their basic needs, uh, you know, that staff support person or, you know, students who struggle with trust and now they have these connections and relationships with these adults and now they're gone, you know? And so um, I think it's important for us, as you know, as we go through Zoom meeting after Zoom meeting, talking about student engagement and attendance and are they submitting work that we're really focusing also on how are we supporting students that might need structure that, you know, are in a home uh, that's dysfunctional, that have a history of trauma. Um, and I think especially with, for staff, uh, for teachers and for teachers that are focused a lot right now because we're not really getting a lot of guidance in terms of grades and it's changing per day, uh, that we really take a step back and look at what are we providing our students in terms of support uh, to make it through the next month. Um, and again, addressing the challenges. Um, on a personal note, I, I'm a mother of an almost three-year-old that needs me throughout the day. My husband is an essential worker, so he's not here with me throughout the day. And so I had to juggle, you know, again, like Lisa said, the multiple hats, being a, a social worker, but also being a mother uh, and being a spouse. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's, there's a difference between working from home and trying to work from home. And the majority of the time, I'm trying to work from home because my attention, it's not as much as I would love to give my 100% attention to my students and my work, it's very difficult. And I think it's important for us to address that challenge, right? That, you know, our stress levels are definitely gonna go up. My stress levels definitely went up. Um, our burnout rates, uh, just because we are out of our, our safety our safety zone, right? Where we're home, yes, we're in a safe environment. However, we're juggling a lot of different things. Uh, and definitely, you know, it's a change of routine for us. It's a change of routine for the students. It's a change of routine even for my own son um, that was used to kind of going to daycare and mom picking me up. And then we had our routine, right? And now, so all of us are out of our own routine and are kind of struggling with that change as well. Um, 
And I think also, uh, you know, the realistic expectations that we put on ourselves. I definitely, I very hard on myself sometimes that I feel like I need to be doing more, that I should be doing more outreach. And definitely, like Lisa said, take uh, looking at self-care and what are we doing uh, for ourselves? What are some expectations that are realistic? Um, and setting those goals for each day. Um, definitely, you know, I, one of the other challenges is like Dr. Kelly said, this is uncharted territory. This is the first time, um, you know, that we are kind of pushed to go into re remote learning, e-learning. We have unclear expectations. Um, in my school district, at least, I feel like every two days we're getting an email with changes in terms of what's expected, what we need to be doing, what we should be putting up to students. And so it's definitely up in the air for grading, for grades, for our seniors, you know. So there's very unclear expectations uh, for those of us that are very, that need structure and then need to be told exactly what to do. It might be, you know, stress producing that we are changing every single day, every couple of days. And also, again, going back to feeling, am I doing enough? Should I be doing more? Should I reach out to my boss and ask for more work? You know, I think we do not know uh, because it's the first time that we're going through this, what our role, what are our job duties, what we can adapt to as being at home, what we can't do and we should just let go of. It's very murky and um, I think it's definitely difficult. Um, and the biggest, and I'm sure all of you can, can attest to this, is student engagement, right? Um, my school building, uh, we were in year two of uh, going to one-on-one -on -one in terms of Chromebooks. So we were already uh, already uh, kind of focusing on transition. However, um, at least for our, our building, I think it was a Friday and then it was kind of like rumors here and there, hey, we might not be back on Monday, get all your things and try to be ready. But, um, you know, I don't think, we, you know, we, we acted in that second. And so we, our students were not prepared also with their materials to take home. Um, so I think student engagement is definitely one of the biggest challenges. Uh, we're dealing with high school students. Uh, their sleep routines are definitely all mixed up. Some of them are sleeping throughout the day uh, and are awake all our night. Um, access to resources, right? I, I think I, my school is 60% Hispanic, 60% um, low income. And so we're definitely making sure that we are addressing the, the, the challenges and the support that our students need. Uh, one of the things that we've been working with in our small group uh, PLCs is working on assumptions. Um, some of our teachers feel um, that students should have a, a specific space for students to, to uh, you know, do their homework and to do and to read and to have silent reading. And we have to take a step back and say, okay, so a lot of our students are living in a one bedroom apartment with six other siblings that are also trying to do e-learning, right? So trying to um, understand and take a step back and not as assume that students have a space, a, a space that they can do this or assume that their parents are home to help them or assume that they have the, the resources that they need as well. And one of the other things as well that we've really been focusing on and that has come up uh, again and again is that students are getting an information overload. Um, it was shocking to see a student's like Google account of all the emails and all the notifications that they were getting of every assignment that teachers are posted. And so that, this is really overwhelming, especially for our students um, that might need more support, that ha need help with executive functioning skills. You know, they're getting all this uh, information and they're feeling really overwhelmed. And they, uh, you know, we might think that they're great in technology and that they're awesome with social media and that they play all these video games and that this is like their, their strength. However, um, they're getting overwhelmed with the, with the amount of information that they're receiving on a daily basis. So I wanted to touch on some of the things that we're doing in our school building to support our students. Um, like Lisa said, there's a really high em emphasis on connection, making sure that we are meeting their basic needs. So for a lot of our students, we're definitely doing a lot of outreach to make sure that they're getting food, that they're reaching out to the schools and getting the lunches and the breakfasts that we are offering, uh, that if they need Wi-Fi or a hotspot or if they need a computer, 
to drop them off at, at, at home. Uh, we have teachers, myself included, that we've gone to homes at 6 p.m., 7 p.m., of course, wearing our gloves and our mask, and we drop it off and we don't make any connection, um, uh, face-to-face connection. However, making sure that our students are getting those basic needs. For a lot of our students, our school building, our school staff, we're meeting those needs. And so now they're at home and we wanna make sure that they continue to get those needs covered. Um, to increase uh, student engagement, one of the things that we've been doing is we've been offering staff and student luncheon meets. So what we do, um, and again, going back to a little bit of the context of the populations that I work with, um, one of my programs that I work with, it's about 40 students, the other one's about 14. So I understand that this might be a little more difficult when you're working with higher numbers of students. However, uh, for smaller groups, this has worked a lot, really well. We've you know, reached out to staff and students and said, hey, uh, at 12 o'clock on Fridays, grab your lunch, just join us in our Zoom meeting, we just wanna check in. Um, and we've gotten, um, in the last couple of weeks, we've gotten about like 12, 15, 20 students that jo just join us and ask questions regarding Google Classroom. And that this is a way to connect and to check in with each other to see how we're doing. Um, the, the other thing that has been really great is we've been doing wellness checks. Um, for us as staff, we're not allowed to go to the homes. However, we do have a police liaison that still is available to us to be able to go and do wellness checks. So for the students that have not been checking in either through attendance or have not been completing any of the work, um, we've asked our police liaison who is awesome and has really great relationships with our students. Hey, can you just go to this house with for this student and check in? Maybe they don't have a computer, maybe something's going on, maybe their family has been effect, uh, affected by COVID. We just wanna make sure that that student is okay. Um, and he, he, you know, he's done over 80 wellness checks and he's been able to set them up even through Remind, make sure that they have food, make sure that they have what they need. And I think that has been great. Um, also for, for our uh, special education students, we've been tag teaming with our case managers to do weekly check-ins. Um, so although this might seem like it's a lot of work, this is a great way to connect with the parents and also check in on the students. So our case managers and myself or the other social worker, we take a day of the week um, for an hour and a half and we, you know, we call home for our students yeah. to make sure um, to make sure that they have what they need or if they have any questions regarding Google Classroom or any of that. Um, and most recently, those of us who are in Illinois, in Illinois know that uh, they started an Illinois remote learning plan. Um, and so that uh, has been going home uh, focused on uh, specific goals for the student that includes also social work um, and emotional goals and how we can meet them either through Google Meets, uh, through Zoom, or through Remind. And one of the, Lisa, can you go back really quickly? Let me just touch base on the. Um, one of the, the things that I've really um, gotten into just to, to engage some of my students that love TikTok and Instagram and all of that is I've ventured into the world of TikTok. I, I feel uh, there's a lot of, for those of you who, who are in TikTok, there's a lot of like um, videos of like 30 year old women or older who are in this like teenage world. So I definitely feel uh, that I am like one of the older ones. I've only made videos for school, but I wanted to show just a quick, simple three second TikTok that I did just to um, try to get those kids to come into our uh, student and staff luncheon meets. So I usually, I send these through Remind. Um, and they could be funny. I just did one for three seconds to try to get our kids to, to join us. Are you sharing, Nadia? I I'm am not share. Not sharing? No, not yet. Okay. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay. So just three seconds of me just being like, okay, I'm so excited to see all of you. Let's see who comes in. And it's just me staring at myself. Um, <laughs> and and the, you cannot believe the reaction that I got from kids. They loved it. And I, I that week, we got a lot more kids um, to join us. Lisa, okay. you, you have a I'm ready. 
Okay. Next slide. Yes, please. Um, I don't want to take too much time to let my colleagues go on, but I also included some interventions that I have been using. I know a lot of us are uh, trying to wrap our brain across what we can do in terms of interventions with our students that might have social work minutes and that we've been working with for a long time. Um, I included all of these are in the Google Share folder. Um, one of the things that we've been working on, and I wish I could, could have shared it today, however, um, we haven't finished it, is just developing a schedule for our students. We might think high school students have it all together and they don't need a schedule for their day. However, they still do. And so we've been working with case managers and teachers to develop like a, a schedule for students uh, that are home, like what their schedule will look like in terms of how much time uh, do they need to work on assignments? When should they be working on them? Um, and so we're working on that. For those of us that use zones of regulation, um, I just did like a, a, a Google uh, Word, like a graph, and it uh, includes, can you click on it, Lisa? Yes. Oh, you might not be able to. Well, hold on. I have a lot of emails, sorry. Well, it is not gonna let me do it. It's not let me switch, okay. Not, it's okay. It's in there for all of you to see. Yeah. Uh, you can edit it uh, for your students. And we're in, in school, we used to have for class period and the student would kind of mutter their emotions and color it in red, green, blue, yellow. Um, we kind of adapted it to a uh, regular day, like a one, it's like nine in the morning to all the way at night. And the student could kind of monitor their moods and how they're doing, what kind of coping skills they've used. Um, and so it's in there for you guys to see. Um, I think it's a great way to also, um, you, uh, the student can use this throughout the day, but then if you have a scheduled time to meet with the student throughout the week, then that gives you an opportunity to also review that and to, uh, and to talk about it. Um, there's a couple of other resources there regarding like coping skills for students if they, um, uh, it's like the whole month of April and each day there's a different coping skills that they can use, whether it's going for a walk or drawing. Um, so that's in there for you guys as well. Um, and I love therapy in a nutshell. It's a really good YouTube channel that talks, uh, has a lot of different uh, videos in terms of anxiety, uh, mindfulness activities, uh, breathing exercises that are very quick, like one to two minutes, and that are great to also uh, use with students. Um, and I also used uh, resources from Erica's Lighthouse that has a lot of information for parents. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I've been getting a lot of um, also calls from parents saying, hey, I need help. My students, uh, my son is acting out even more. My son is struggling at home. His stress levels are increasing. His anxiety is out of control. Um, and so also giving those parents education on, on everything. And they have everything in there in Erica's Lighthouse. Uh, it's a great resource for everybody to have. Okay, thank you, Nadia. Nadia, there was a quick question about how do you get the TikTok video to kids? Was that it through, through Remind? Through Remind, yes. So we use heavily Remind in our school. Our school has a school uh, account that we use. So I send it through Remind. So all the messages that I have with students are through Remind. I send the videos through there as well links for like a Google Meets or if we have a Zoom meeting, everything I use through Remind. Okay, excellent, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so next, Angie Halstead from Nebraska is gonna take, take over for us. All right, thank you, Lisa. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Angie Halstead. I'm a school social worker uh, in Nebraska. I work for the Fremont Public Schools in Fremont, Nebraska. I'm also a school mental health advanced practice certificate student. This is my second year. Um, that's been a huge opportunity for professional growth for me. Um, as someone who's considered themselves as a lifelong learner, um, I've been blessed to be a part of that program. Um, this is my 26th year as a school social worker. Um, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about what, can you go to the next slide? what our school district has done for students um, to support students and families. Um, honestly, we're, we're operating at a real basic level at this point. Um, 
our counselors and social workers compile a list of community resources uh, that we can share with families that included agencies that can help uh, provide financial aid, housing, uh, food pantries, as well as family helplines available statewide. Um, it's been made available to all counselors, social workers, and administrators so that we can share it to families um, as needed. Um, we're providing food distribution for all our students. Um, that originally was taking place on a day, on a five day a week basis. And now we're down to two days a week, uh, Mondays and Thursdays. Um, on those Thursdays, we provide a backpack um, that can, of food that can go home for food for the weekend. Um, we've had, we've been look, lucky to have local cable companies offering free internet to support that remote learning that students are involved in. Uh, we're also fortunate enough that all of our students have been issued a Chromebook so that they can engage in that uh, remote e-learning that we're doing right now. Um, we've tried to make contacts with all of our students just to check in with them via email, uh, phone. Um, those have been conducted by the counselors, the teachers. Um, our teachers are having weekly group meetings with students in addition to their classes. Uh, those homeroom teachers are um, assigned to each student and they follow that student for those four years that they're in high school. So they become a really good source of support for those students. Um, Lisa, you want to click to the next one? Um, this is a new support uh, that's been provided for our families in Fremont. Um, it's a, an emotional support line that's available 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, through our local Methodist Hospital. Um, it's a free service and it's confidential. Um, they're calling in, they can call and talk to a counselor, talk about their stress and anxiety going on with, um, with the pandemic. Um, one of my roles at Fremont Public Schools is I'm the homeless education liaison. Um, and that's um, something that I've been doing the last several years. Um, I've put together a number of national resources. Uh, these are um, websites that contain a lot of information to help with um, supporting homeless students during the pandemic. Uh, Schoolhouse Con Connection is a national uh, nonprofit that helps, um, has a lot of information and helps with um, how best to serve homeless students. Uh, the National Center for Homeless Education, um, and of course, the United States Interagency Council on Homelessness. Um, some of the difficulties or challenges that um, we've had in supporting homeless student students is um, they're sometimes difficult to locate, especially now that we're not in school. Obviously, they don't always have a phone. They don't always have a computer. Uh, in order for us to make contact with them. Um, they don't have transportation that would allow them to make it to the food distribution sites. Um, some communities um, in Nebraska and around Fremont have enlisted volunteers to deliver school meals or have arranged for distribution in areas that are easier to reach. Um, we, for example, have a, um, a trailer court that's located outside of Fremont where our students do attend Fremont, but they live quite a distance from town. We've moved what our food distribution out to the Meadowbrook area so that kids that would normally ride a bus into town can now just walk to um, the food distribution site right there in their neighborhood. Uh, the other challenges is that they may not have internet service to participate in e-learning. Um, we've had a cable company in Fremont step up to provide those free internet services. And I know that Verizon Wireless has added 15 megabytes of data so that families can create their own hotspots at home so that kids can participate. Um, I've attached a um, article. Uh, this is about the Austin, Texas school district that have, they begun parking their school buses around town um, those school buses have free Wi-Fi capability, so they're parking them in uh, lower income parts of the city so that people can participate um, and have access to internet services. So that's all I had. Thank you, Angie. On to Pat. <laughs> <clears throat>
Hello, uh, my name is Pat Wolf. I'm a social worker in the southwest suburbs of Chicago. I've been a social worker now. It's my finishing up my 26th or 27th year. It's my 15th year. I'm finishing up here in schools. I was in healthcare. Uh, really, really love working in schools right now. Uh, I, I especially like being, you know, in the, working in this challenging time. Uh, I am a first year student in the uh, school mental health advanced uh, practice. And I, I really like it. I'm someone who obviously went to grad school quite a long time ago. And this has been been awesome. A lot of things, a lot of these tools and research that's been done. This was all really kind of new and wasn't something that I experienced when I went into grad school. And even when I went back to get my certification, it was uh, a little different. So uh, if you guys can go to the, Lisa, go to the first slide. That'd be great. And I'll try to, in the interest of time, try to go through my material relatively quickly. Uh, things that, that we're doing at our school, and by all means, I don't mean that our school should be a model. I just, you know, I think to kind of facilitate discussion, talk about what we're doing and, and what other people are doing. I'm interested in hearing it. Uh, we're trying to still hold IEP minutes. We're focusing on annual reviews, obviously. We have to have that. We're doing that virtually. We are a Google school where every student has uh, a Chromebooks or one-on-one -on -one school. Uh, and we're trying to meet our IEP minutes the best we can. Uh, our district, we have uh, kind of an interesting mix of students in that we're pretty representative uh, from socioeconomic status of, of the world around us. Uh, the, uh, uh, we have a lot of students who have trouble accessing uh, stuff because they're poor and we have a lot of students who do have access to internet and we're still not seeing a lot of kids uh, uh, sign on for e-learning. Other things we're trying to do is we're trying to continue our groups if at all possible. Uh, the only thing, you know, areas of consent are obviously an issue for everyone. Uh, what we're trying to do is just uh, get consent for the current groups that we're doing if we have any IEP kids that are in there. That was uh, the direction of our attorney. We do have a school referral system that is set up for the teachers to do a Google form that then alerts the counselor, number one, if a student is not engaged in virtual learning. And it also has a spot on it where they can bring up any social emotional concerns. So we've had uh, referrals for things from anxiety to uh, someone whose house burned down to homelessness to all those things and it kind of gets generated that way. So it's a pretty nice efficient system. Uh, if you can go on to the next slide. Challenges that we're experiencing to our practice, like we talked about before, taking care of ourselves is harder. Uh, a lot of the social workers, a uh, couple of the social workers I work with, they have a lot of responsibility. My, stu my, my students, my kids are in college, so I don't have to deal with the three, four, eight-year-old, nine-year-old running around my house, so that's good. Um, taking care of myself is certainly more difficult when I don't have the structure, that's more difficult. Uh, how I try to cope is I've increased the amount of time that I spend doing meditation, yoga, going outside and exercising. Uh, one of the challenges to practice as uh, one of my coworkers before, I don't remember who it was, or colleagues before was saying, was it's a real challenge to try to set limits and boundaries. How much do we do? How little do we do to try to engage our kids? Can you go to the next slide, Lisa? Possible social emotional addresses, uh, issues to address that have come up for our school. A lot of people talked about it. I know earlier in the chat box, there was a question of what's gonna go on with graduation. For our school, I know for prom and graduation, they have now set an alternative date for those for July in the hopes that that may happen. I did learn today that apparently for all activities, there's an A, B and a C plan depending upon where we're at in relation to the pandemic. So hopefully I can get some more information and share that with people about what that looks like, but you know, it's it's a, a huge problem for our seniors, for everyone's seniors, the relationships, different type of termination. A lot of these people aren't gonna see these people ever again. Uh, we've seen a worsening of mental health issues due to shelter in place, the financial hardships, loss of revenue, loss of housing. Uh, next slide, please. So what we're doing is we're trying to hit all the usual suspects for our IEP kids and all the kids we know that are the high flyers. We're continuing it, but not expanding any of our tier two groups that we do for emotional regulation and such. Uh, 
supporting our school in tandem with the guidance counselors. Uh, I talked about the referral system. We have updated our resource list and we're making it available to our guidance counselor. And right now we're trying to come to an understanding with uh, our school as far as how we can best present resources, things to do to help people manage themselves as far as with, you know, coping with stress, emotional regulation, those types of things, as well as uh, mental health resources. So if I can bounce it back to you, Lisa, uh, and then maybe we can okay. start the question and answer period. Yes. And let me stop share for a second. So I was going through the chat and trying to get a couple of questions <clears throat> while you guys were talking. So let me see. We've got about 10 minutes. Um, there were a couple of questions. So um, we talked about TikTok um, already. Um, there was a question about boundaries and how to how you address your boundaries and how do you make them more firm. Does anybody want to address the boundaries question? Anybody have a, have a great burning answer on what you're doing or not doing? Okay, Pat's gonna take it, okay. I, I guess if I could maybe say something, you know, one of the things that we do is we meet, we, we meet, uh, in several different ways. We have like a social emotional group, which is made up of our deans, our social worker, our guidance counselors. And we're talking about social emotional issues. We're also meeting as the deans, counselors and social workers uh, as individual teams with our alpha split. But then more importantly, is we're meeting as a team of social workers and we're having these discussions because you know the people that I work with are very talented. They're very, and no, by the way, I don't think anyone's on here. So I'm not just saying it for points, but they're very talented, they're very creative individuals, and they uh, have come up with a, a lot of really great ideas, like what, a lot of things that I've heard here. But it's a question of, we don't really know how much work we're going to get because we're really seeing waves of work. And now we're being asked to do more things uh, to help support like our guidance counselors with certain populations. So it's been really kind of a struggle to figure out how to say no and to doing extra stuff. I mean, we've had some sort of, I guess it's been kind of fortunate because we haven't had a lot of demands from our administration for social emotional support. They've been phenomenal in saying, do the best that you can. You're the experts, come up with ideas. We'll support you, bring it up to us, but they're not trying to micromanage and say, you need to do this in this prescribed way because I read something at you know, some uh, administrative level conference than wanting us to implement something that may not make sense for our school. So, so that's how we're doing it. Okay, thank you. Anybody else want to take it? Okay. Um, <clears throat> I put in the chat. We have a little. We have a little time past five. I let people know we might run over a little bit. So. Okay. Um, you know, and I can certainly hang on. So, and, so, and my daughter. Okay. Um. <clears throat> One of the one of the questions was um, a better protocol with dealing with um, this situation, and I'm not sure if that question was specific to. Of course, it was specific to COVID nineteen, but um, I don't know if that was like suicide prevention, safety. Um, if that was a boundary specific, I'm not really sure. So the person that answered the question, it was it was further up earlier on. So if you were the person that that threw that out there about um, better protocol dealing with the situation, I'm wondering which specific protocol you're talking about. Um, so we can maybe be a little more detailed. Um, <clears throat> trying to work from home, you got a lot of nods for that, Nadia. Um, somebody might make a shirt, I don't know. Um, Nadia, there was a question about your check-ins. Are you doing your check-ins with general education students also? Yes, uh, we, we definitely are. Um, I didn't uh, talk about it, but our counselors are really awesome and they're doing such a great job at filtering through the information that we're getting. Just like students, we as support staff are getting emails every day of lists of kids that are not logging on. So our counselors are doing an awesome job by looking at their caseload and looking at those kids that are not engaging at all. And then uh, 
myself or the other social worker take a look at it as well to see if we've done any outreach. And then again, our police liaison is also uh, doing some of those home visits as well. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> one of the questions was, were certificates available for the Zoom meeting? Um, Dr. Kelly, I think that's you, um, yes? Yeah, it's in the chat. Uh, our, our friend Scott has already put it in. There's a link. You can get it. Um, there is no CEUs. We're not doing CEUs. We're not charging, but you can get a certificate of attendance. Okay. So, All yeah. right. Um, um, <clears throat> there was another question about um, examples of forms for teachers. Um, I'm not sure which forms we were talking about specifically. Um, I think we've sent resources. I don't know if we had any teacher specific forms in in there so if somebody if that was your question and you have a specific form that you were seeking will you let us know so we can address it while we're still on here um there's been more questions about platforms what kind of platforms are you guys using for groups for those that are doing groups I can go. Um, our district it has given us the okay to use Zoom and Google Meets. Um, I know there were some questions regarding Zoom in terms of either getting hacked or confidentiality. Uh, we have been using a consent form for any type of group that we're doing. We were told by our district that any type of individual service does not need a consent form, but any type of group service does. Um, so once we get consent, we do use Zoom or Google Meet. Uh, we were also advised to do the Zoom, but not the, the free version that we have to do, I think the 1499 version um, that allows us um, to mute people, to take people off. So what I did last time that I did a group as I had, um, I used Zoom and I did mute everyone in the beginning, but it also, um, there was a student that was definitely on his video games, it was swearing, I was able to kick him off or send him a message privately or mute him. So um, we so far we've been told that we can use Zoom and Google Meets as well. Okay, um, there was a question. Um, so there was a question about general ed and permission. I'm going to come back to that because I'm also um, one of the general ed people. But Pat, the question about the um, the forms for teachers was for you. You mentioned um, you mentioned some forms for teachers in your presentation. Do you know what we're yeah, talking Yeah, they about? did. I don't know. Uh, I'm sorry. I think it's a Google survey or something like that. But whatever the Google form is, is there's a, a form that just comes up. And it looks like you're filling out a survey and they put in like the student ID number. And then they can just say, you know, they have to put in, how have you tried to engage the students? So you've sent an email, you've called the parents, you do this. So the onus is really on the teachers to try to engage the students. And then what happens, and they send it in, then if there's also, or instead there's a social emotional concern, they can fill it out. And then it automatically, there's an email that gets sent to the counselor with a link and they go in and they do the document. They talk about their interventions and what they've tried to do. And then they let us know if they need further support because they've spoke to the family and there's a social emotional concern, or in fact, if there's a, a just a social emotional concern that they let us know. And then when we know then we're able to go in and we can update form two. So the school has the record of what they've tried to do. And it also keeps track of, of what everyone's tried to do. Um, I can find out a little bit more and I um, probably the end of this week when we have some meetings and I can you know, when we do our PLT, I'd like to be a part of that and we can have that discussion. And okay. certainly when I find out more, I can also, you know, maybe upload it here to the drive or something. Okay, thank you. Because I didn't know if you were going to be owner of that document or if it was going to be something that you would need to copy, delete all the sensitive information, of course, and, and then share if you have permission. Right. And I would not put anything that would be real sensitive in there because a lot of people would have access to it. I might put a little more specific information. We have a separate documentation system that only uh, the guidance staff have access to. And that's where I document a little bit more. Okay, excellent. Um, Dr. Kelly. Yeah, there's a, um, um, a really interesting question that's been in the chat and you were probably getting there, Lisa, but I just want to make sure because people are starting to hop off a little bit. And I want to make sure we're conscious okay. of time for people. Um, and I really, I would love to know everybody's reaction to this one, because this is going to be a big focus of the Summer Institute that we're going to do um, in mid-July, because people are going to be 
our, our, our country and our schools are going to be in some state of clarity about when we're opening again by then. I mean, whatever that is, we're going to know more then. Um, so the question was something to the effect of what are you all doing? What are you thinking of doing when things go back to schools opening? And there's been really early in the chat, as you were talking, actually, Lisa, there was a comment by somebody about how there's new traumas that are being experienced, right? I mean, certainly the losses that people are having around the health of loved ones or their own worries, but also just the loss of all the things that we've just talked about, prom, graduation, um, the social connections. So how each of you, I'd be curious to know just how, how are you thinking with your schools about how that's gonna be handled? Um, it's okay to also say, we're not talking about it all yet, but I know some people are, we're, we do a lunchtime live chat uh, as a lot of you know, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays here on the network, and I host that. And that came up today. Somebody was bringing that. So I'd be curious. Uh, I don't know, Nadia, you wanted to start, just talk about kind of what, what you know about what's waiting in the fall. So it's interesting because as support staff, we, we have one conversation, and when we have administrators, it's definitely a different <laughs> type of conversation. What we um, have been hearing a lot is that there's a possibility that we could do somewhat of a gradual coming back of um, like coming back in shifts. I don't really know what that's going to look like. However, as support staff, we've been very adamant and uh, making sure that we understand that, like you said, there's a, a whole lot of, of different traumas that are occurring now. And I can only imagine um, in what state our students are going to be coming back and, and teachers too. I think, um, it, it's going to be it's going to be different than but we you know there's conversations that are um, they're having I think with administrators and they're not ready yet to let us know however we've been hearing that there might be um, we it might be coming back in waves as we come in into the fall Angie Pat Lisa any other things you're hearing um, right now, we're we're looking at um, first how we're going to facilitate graduation. Um, there's ideas being thrown around, but nothing solid yet. Um, <clears throat> I'm anticipating that we're going to have um, a lot more social emotional needs once our students do get back in the building. Um, so I'm I'm really ramping up my self care and trying to make sure that I'm ready and prepared. Um, for whatever the day is going to bring when we do get to walk back in the building. Um, so that's just how I'm personally effectively preparing. Um, and just making sure we're connecting and, and being available right now. So I don't know. Um, I'm hoping that graduation ceremony will be um, able to maybe be delayed or something so that students can get that full experience. And, and we'll see right now, St. Louis County, um, our, our stay at home order is indefinite right now. They're gonna review it um, in May on the 15th, but um, they're not planning on lifting it. We're some of the highest area in the state, so. Right. Pat or Angie, anything else to add to that? I, I don't really have, I'm not really sure what our school is doing with those things. I know it's being taken care of at administrative level, but I just feel kind of, disconnected from that. I will get more information when I have my guidance meeting on Friday. So I have nothing to add at this point. I haven't been involved in any conversations about what it will be like when we return, what the plans are, any protocol policies. I, I'm still waiting to hear. Yeah. So thank you, Lisa, for letting me just jump in with that question because it did come up in the chat. And I, I think what um, I've also put in the chat just now is the uh, Summer Institute information, and you are certainly welcome, uh, everybody on this, because it's going to be a virtual one, to go register for that. We try to keep the price pretty low and affordable for people to make it. These guys will be there in some form or another, whether they're presenting like this or sharing recorded stuff that they've done. Um, but, but one of the, the, the key focal points of that work will be, sorry for the dogs have decided we're done. Um, one of the key points of that work is going to be how do we get back to school? How do we get back to normalcy? Um, so I just I appreciate you letting us ask about that. Lisa, did you have any other questions that you saw? There was one that I was answering um, personally. It was a question about general ed and are they doing consents um, for actually doing um, video sessions with kids and um, 
And so um, I was sharing that I do ask for those and I was using the NASW form. So I'll, um, I'll add that, I'll download that and add that to the Google um, cause I think that's on my work computer. So I'll download that um, and put that into the Google drive. And um, I see a lot of good stuff on, on the summer Institute. And I'm just peeking up to see if there's any other questions. Uh, does the consent include risk, et cetera, using technology for groups? Um, <clears throat> so the one that we, um, when um, Tanya Hernandez did a, did a talk earlier and um, earlier last month, so at, earlier at the start of the pandemic, she pulled up some, um, some resources from NESW and it's really, um, I really liked what they said about safety concerns. Um, it asked for not only where you are, but it asked for where you're sheltering in place because we know that students may not be at their actual address. So in case you did need to make a call for safety, um, you would have access to that information. Um, so it so it's there um, on that form. So that's what, um, what I've been using. I see something about passive consent. There's a lot of um, for non-groups um, in special ed sessions. So there's, um, I'm not special education, so I'd have to defer um, defer that one to somebody else. Um, I can I can respond, Lisa. I also okay. uh, responded that um, we use a different consent form. Um, our district, I think, uh, spoke to their attorneys and they developed a different consent form, but it also included information regarding like. Um, you know, consequences if they were to uh, snap, take a Snapchat or a video of it. Also, responsibility on the student of like making sure they have a safe space, a private space, and not using headphones. Uh, that we were also as staff making sure that we are abiding by confidentiality in, in our in our homes and all of that. Um, and and I think it's important to address that with the students as well. Okay. Um, Lisa, I think we're going to, uh, um, we're losing people, so we should probably wind up a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah. And the last one was just on crisis response um, in the community. So I would say um, that one, Tanya, did a good job handling and has one out there. So I would refer you back to the SSWN um, and look at Tanya, Her Tanya Her Hernandez's presentation. She and I, just so you know, I put her link back in the chat as well. People can go okay. get it. Thank you. Um, yeah. Well, can I just say, uh, I am so grateful for Pat and Lisa and Angie and Nadia and Lisa for being the moderator and organizing this. Um, clearly people have really appreciated what you all have brought today. Um, just before we sign off, I wanna remind uh, everybody, if you're interested in keeping this going as a conversation with the people that are with us today, um, we would love to, to consider doing a PLC um, I do think one of the other things in addition to the Summer Institute that could happen in that PLC is starting to talk about how we get kids back to school, what they need. Um, and so um, I just, I, I'm really grateful that we got to be together today. We have three more of these. If you like these, come on back. We're talking about alternative education on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, EC and, uh, and high school and middle school, I should say. So um, on behalf of Lisa, Angie, Nadia and Pat, thank you all for coming. Um, thanks for being here. Thank um, and uh, and, and uh, panelist team, we will follow up with you and we will get together probably early next week to debrief a little bit. Okay. Um, Dr. Kelly, there was something in chat. Um, someone tried to sign up and they can only view the Google. They can't edit. Oh, I, I need to change the links on that. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. I, I will go back in and do that. So guys, thank you so much for, for doing this. I appreciate everything. That was really good. Did you have fun? Did you have fun? It was awesome. I'm sorry I went over time, guys. <laughs> you were terrific, Nadia. It's just, you know, we, we always want to make sure we, we, we get everybody in and Angie and Pat really rolled with it well. So Angie, thank you 